Hey folks, welcome back. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redman, AlphaGo versus the world. And uh, of course, these uh, these are games from the Master Series, happened in uh, I think 2016, early 2017. Am I remembering right, Michael? We kind of it's one of those two. I think this game was um, let's see, it probably was already in 2017. Yeah, early, early. Yeah, yeah. it was in early January, January second or something like that. New Year's, New Year's surprise. So very exciting games. We've been working our way through. Uh, of course, it's a special series that we're doing, a uh, shorter game analyses, and then uh, we'll be publishing uh, longer ones in our forthcoming volume two of uh, AlphaGo to Zero. This is part of our projected four volume set uh, when Michael and I will be, you know, like old and stuff, you know? <laughs> you think so, huh? <laughs> Anyhow, today I think we have another new players. We've had kind of a run of, of brand new people who are just flinging themselves at AlphaGo. Oh, yeah, brand new people, but they're all world champions. Yeah. Like today's player is Jiang Weijie. He's a nine Dan, um, born in Shanghai. Let's see, what's his age? Um, 1991, so that makes him, um, he's in his 20s still. He's old yeah. compared to the last batch. He's a bit older than some of the players, but he um, he was a world champion in 2012. And a very famous player, actually. He's, he's very well known in Japan, too. And this game is sort of special because AlphaGo is going to play un unusual Joseki choices. So all of them are moves that were not very popular before AlphaGo in three corners. And like by the time it gets to the third corner, it's pretty irrelevant because it's going to be. <laughs> anyway. So, are we ready to get into the game? Let's go. Let's check it out. I can't wait. So, uh, AlphaGo is white. John Wei is black. So, this is a position where AlphaGo might have been playing that Shimari A uh, like this. And then, like, quite often the human player plays here, and then AlphaGo plays here. This is a pattern we've been seeing in this in this uh, set of games. Yeah. Zhang Weijie plays a high card. This is a quite quite a common uh, move in this opening board position. Like, Black wants to know if White is going to um, play an attachment underneath, like it, like this. In fact, this is the game move, right? In which case, Black is going to. Black could have played this way. This actually nowadays Black would probably play this way because people don't play the avalanche so much anymore, and this would happen. Perfectly reasonable. Something like this. This is something that could be played before AlphaGo and is still played after AlphaGo. Okay. Perfectly reasonable opening. In the game, Black played the Nadare, the avalanche Joseki. And AlphaGo just says, I'm not going to get into that. And <laughs> so this was something that was pretty rare at the time. It wasn't played that much. And some people thought of this as bad fighting spirit by White because White was not rising to the challenge of playing, for instance, in this case, if White plays this one, the latter is going to favor Black. So Black can play this variation and it's probably not so good for White. So in many cases, White would be playing this variation and you probably know that this just rises a lot of complications. Um, this is the famous Avalanche Joseki where at first people were playing this, this move for white next, and then later on they played this move. And even before computers, we were working out new variations for this Joseki um, quite rapidly. Like um, there was a period where a new variation would come up, a viable new variation would come up every few weeks. And that was pretty, Pretty fast for human humans sitting on their own, actually. Yeah. So this is a Joseki where the human player has a lot of accumulated knowledge about this. And we're sort of suspecting that maybe AlphaGo doesn't think of it in the same way and doesn't have the local knowledge that we have. So it's a, a position which I was thinking, at least, is potentially dangerous for AlphaGo. And so I thought it was just uh, chickening out. But actually, this gets a better score. <laughs> Turns out that this is the better move. And White just takes Sente and has the corner territory. And that was basically, that was the point of White's attachment underneath with this move. When White plays here, White is, White's idea is to take um, something like a 15-point 
territory in the corner, establishing a territory as white's advantage, local advantage, because white does start with the corner, a stone in the corner, white has a local advantage. This joseki that uh, turns out like this is one way, a very simple way for white to establish that advantage by taking territory. So that was the idea. And the game is just slightly different. But again, it's important that white has sente here. White has the initiative to move to the upper left corner. And this is the one of, one of the games which um, very prominently demonstrated the fact that AlphaGo was ending up with the initiative every time. Like it was choosing Joseki, making Joseki choices that gave it sente every time. So white plays here, uh, black plays the pincer. This is pretty standard for the time and it's just make, trying to make use of this outside wall to put pressure on white on the left side of the board. It's a very reasonably looking move. I'm White plays here. Does, does that hold up to to uh, AI analysis? The pincer. This is still okay. Okay. Um, like I, you know, AIs will play an attachment underneath any time. <laughs> so, <laughs> like Black could have played here. I think in this board position, Black would actually follow it up with some kind of a pincer. So maybe something like this. So even this would be allowed um, in with a modern computer program. They just don't like to pincer. Uh, but I think this one was pretty much okay. It's it's still about 50% at this point. But it was at this point where black goes wrong. <laughs> now, this is a famous joseki. It's, um, it's the sort of muramasa when, um, in some of the variations, when, like, when, um, in, in some of the more complicated variations, it's called that. This is this is the one where, and Stephen probably knows this, where you there's a, you get complicated. If black attaches on the uh, on the outside. Well, this is just about the only move that was played at the time. Right. And white plays here, black plays here. Right, right, right. White bumps against. This right. is actually the game variation. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, this is. There were some players who were um, a bit unusual, who would play this move. It turns out this move is better. No, really? Yeah. And um, white will probably cover on top and black gets to get some territory. Huh. Uh, did you notice that black has sente? Oh, That's really yeah. important. It really score a lot if you have the initiative, if you take sente. So nice. in this variation, black has sente. And this is the advised move. Otherwise, if white covers here, this is going to be dangerous for white. Black just pushes through even. Um, this fight is probably just dangerous for white. Mm. So black should have played here. Everyone had been playing this move. This was the joseki. And we had all these joseki that we had studied where black plays here, white bumps against. And we thought, you know, just pushing through here is so vulgar. There were a few players who played it, some, some prominent players like Ning Kaiho played it in an important game. And everyone disliked him for playing that. It was supposed to be really vulgar. And so just about everyone would be playing this way. This was the standard Joseki, and white would then, depending on the ladder, sometimes white would play here, and there's all these complicated variations where black plays the cut here, and it turns yeah, into a ladder. Yeah, I remember that. If white didn't want to do that, white could um, play here, and this people said that this was a bit submissive and stuff like that. And then there was the variations which we were playing with where white did not bump against and instead played an attachment to the 3-3 three, three point, and this was really popular at the time also. So there was all these... Um, all this um, investigation of the variations of this joseki that was going on right at this time and before this time. And so the human player was probably pretty confident that he knew what he was doing here. But no, no, um, he was wrong. He had to play here. And now at 21, the next move, he, he makes another mistake. He makes something like two or three mistakes in this area. So when white played here, Everyone knows that black is supposed to play here, or that's what we knew. Yeah. Black plays here. Ooh. Ooh. Now, this is really weird. It's exciting. Is that, is like, is that something he made up himself? And if black plays here, uh, this would be relatively easy. And we were always saying that this is good for white because white has a relatively good shape here. Mm. Uh, like, this is a variation that black could play if white had played this way. In which case, this stone is sort of clumpy and bad. 
in the game, this is supposed to be okay for black, uh, okay for white, because white has that ponuki and a, a nice shape there. Right? It's making eyes. Mm -hmm. Whereas if that stone was here, that would be sort of um, taking away white's own potential for eyes. And the human um, evaluation here was correct. Computers agreed. So when white plays the Atari here, surprise, black connects. And no one ever thought of this move. This is, you know, it's just unthinkable. Interesting. <laughs> but this is the correct. And uh, white, white has two weak points. Like if white connects on the outside, black can connect up here with something like this. This would be okay for black. Black just takes the side territory. Yeah. White doesn't have such a great shape on the outside. Yeah. So oh, white's yeah. going to play the other way, connecting on the fourth line. Black's going to cut here, and we get into this fight. Something like this. Um, the final black move was really difficult to choose. It could have been a pincer on the side. Um, but white does have a nice shape there on, on the left side. And since Alpha, I mean, uh, Katago was already saying that white had a slight advantage the moment black played this attachment here, it's probably slightly better for white. But this would have been better than the game. So I was really surprised not so much by this move, which has been seen in human play, but the fact that Black actually did not play here but connected against the Atari, uh, that came as a big surprise. Like, yeah. connecting there was just uh, completely, it was a blind spot for me. Mm. I didn't even think of it. Well, it, it looks clunky, doesn't it? I mean, it's... it's it so uh, clunky. But the fact is that, like, if you compare it to... If you compare it to this move... Um, it's it's easier for black to to cut white when black is when black is played here and is cutting at this point. This is a better cut. Um, yeah. It's a better cut because white's shape here on the upper side is sort of lousy, and that's why white ends up sacrificing those two stones. Okay. So that was a big surprise. I sort of um, almost fell out of my seat when I saw that. <laughs> But black extends. This was the Joseki that was uh, standard at the time. And so nowadays, I think a computer program would be suggesting slightly different moves for black, maybe like the there's an old Joseki where black plays here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Joseki where black plays here that sort of depends on the latter favoring black, which is not the case in this, in this board position. Um, so there's other options. Maybe in this case, black would be playing this one. But you know, we we knew that this was the right move. That's what we thought, and we were expecting white to play here. White plays there, sort of breaking the rules. Um, like the player would want to say, "You're not supposed to play there." That's supposed to be bad. And now black has a number of choices. Black played here in the game. It probably would have been slightly better just to cut. And I think in this series, we're going to pe see people um, trying both. And a lot of experimentation went on with this Joseki after, after this AlphaGo set of games. But eventually, um, we stopped playing it for black. There was a, a period where we were trying out all of these various variations, and people weren't really convinced that this was actually good for white. But it, it lasted a few months. And then we finally decided that, after all, it was good for white. So in this case, white's probably going to play like this and switch to the upper side. Um, this might be slightly better than the game. It's a, it's a very fine difference. It's probably more important for black to play a hanging connection now, because in the game, black played a solid connection. And it's very understandable, because the idea is that at this point, black has this wall here. So white's probably, the expected move is for white to play some move towards the upper left corner, upper right corner. So if we have white do that, then black's going to play some kind of a pincer. And black's going to get some territory here, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I would expect. That means that if black plays this way, it'll just be that much less territory for black when the same thing happens. Oh, sorry. In this, in this variation, if we have the same thing happening, it's just the exchange for, for of this stone for this stone. Uh, maybe black's losing a couple of points of territory, you might think. So, 
it's inefficient, right? I mean, it's, right. it's, it's not it's, really it's helping you. Not really helping that much. So that would explain the human choice to connect here. What the human player is not realizing here is that white is not going to play that move all the way to the upper right. Right? In this position, maybe white would play here. But in the game position, when black does that, white is not going to play that approach to the corner. White is going to pincer black's wall. Like this, is, <laughs> this was the big surprise. You can't pincer a wall. You pincer a wall because white has this stone here, which is going to be annoying later. White's going to use that stone <laughs> to force black to capture it. That stone is almost captured. It's almost captured, but if it does get out, black will have pretty clunky shape on both sides. And so when white does this, especially these three stones in a, a straight line here, they're, they're a position, a shape that doesn't have much eye space. So when white does that, this is a position where it would have helped a little bit to have that black stone at the mark point. So that's why black sort of played a hanging connection. That's, that's just, I mean, yes, that's great analysis, but I'm sorry, that is just nuts, okay? You don't attack uh, wall. It, It's yeah. something that the human player was just, it was, would have, it's just about impossible to expect white to pincer this wall. Yeah, you can't even call that a blind spot because that's like, you know, <laughs> you know. White has more than 60% winning percentage at this point, by the way. So Black's going to have, Black's going to be um, working hard to win on the board before Comey. <laughs> so Black plays a pincer, obviously, right? Of course he does. <laughs> and White plays this crazy move towards the center. And Black plays away. So the idea would be that like White has this weak group next to Black's wall. It should be working, right? <laughs> now White plays this here. This is, this is exactly what Black is supposed to do. You build a wall, and then you want to entice your opponent so you can squish them against the wall and use the wall to attack. And, and, but right. white, white is drawing Black into his trap. Right. Now white is, White's place here, it, it's the wall that is getting pushed around. Because if White <laughs> plays that mark point next, if Black, for instance, plays away and White plays here next, you can see that Black's going to be in trouble. Oh, yeah. Black should okay. be able to live on the upper side, but these stones are pretty eyeless also. It's an eyeless shape. So it's just going to be really bad for black if white starts to attack there. So black has to protect the wall. And this is so bad. It becomes apparently bad, even from my viewpoint. <laughs> it, I can see that the wall is getting pushed around. So I was, I think at the time, I was doing a video for you on the AJ yeah. channel, if I yeah. remember correctly. And I was wondering if maybe black should have played here. It seems more, more. It's more active, right? um, hitting a weak point in white's knife shape. It turned out that white does have an attachment to counterattack here and gets sort of complicated, very difficult to understand. Maybe I'll go into detail there and, and try to figure it out in the book. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, to be honest, I don't have a clear explanation of why this move does not work so well for black. Mm. Um, it's, it's a, it seemed, at the time, it seemed reasonable to play away. But then white plays here. And black has to defend this wall. So this huge wall is going to turn into a clump of stones, just sort of <laughs> a lot of stones used to capture that one white spot. Oh, yeah. And white already has something very close to a living shape here. So um, that's really very, very good for white. And then white curls around here. And you just look at the whole board position. White has all the territory. Like white has this big territory in the lower side. The moment that black plays, um, answers that white move by playing something like the mark point, white's going to be able to play something from the center to reduce white, to, to reduce black's potential in the center. White has this other, uh, other territory here. Black's upper right corner is not a territory yet because white can jump into the three, three point. There are no black territories that have been established yet. Black's just way behind in creating territory. But, but, so but this, worse than that, Michael, I mean, you know, the whole thing about having the wall is to attack. Mm -hmm. And so the attack is not only, as you pointed out, not only been nullified, but actually the wall has been attacked. And I mean, I got to ask you, I mean, it's just going to be extremely disheartening in terms of having a game plan when, you know, and it's, it's, it's and like you said, AK-47 and somebody beat you over the head with it. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, White just made such, such um, great use of that marked stone. The, the mark, the, the stone. I'll just leave that one mark on the board. I could show you a bit more because uh, actually AlphaGo played 
something a bit unusual in this corner, the lower right corner too. This move here was not played very much before off ago. Ah, okay. Now um, you might recognize it because it's a fairly common move now in 2020. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe this was um, this was the first time I saw AlphaGo play it. It was a very unusual move before AlphaGo played it, but it worked really well in this game. So white's going to get a good position there too, um, allowing black to surround the lower side, which is open on the side. You might notice white has this move next. And, you know, it just, it's really one-sided. But actually, this is one of the games that became fairly close. I think at the end, uh, AlphaGo only won by one and a half points or something like that. Uh -huh. Well, it became fairly close, but it's, it's very one-sided. And the way AlphaGo takes control of the game is really spectacular. It really is. I mean, it's just 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 the idea of, of you know, oh, you've got a wall, no problem. I mean, just to have that in your mind as a player, right? Yeah. Um, it's just amazing. And the fact that it played unusual moves, at least there weren't new moves, strictly speaking, but in each of these corners, it played unusual moves and that were so effective that people started copying that almost immediately. We started right. researching these moves. Wow. Great stuff, Michael, as usual. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for watching. And, uh, you know, go ahead, try this at home. Be careful. It probably won't work out for you, at least not at first, but uh, that's all right. You know, <laughs> lots of games to go. But uh, and speaking of lots of games to go, we're going to keep on moving. So we will uh, see you next game. Thanks again for watching.